These are practice exercises from page 260 and 262 in the textbook. And this time we're talking about ionization energies. So this first question asks us, which of these has the greater third ionization energy, calcium or sulfur? Now a third ionization energy, this is the energy required to remove a third electron. And the only way we can understand or compare the energy required to remove the third electrons from both of these elements is to figure out which energy level, which orbital, that third electron is in. So what we want to do is we want to find both of these on the periodic table. And so if we take a look on the periodic table, we'll see sulfur is here, calcium is here, so we can go ahead and write electron configurations for them. So for sulfur, it's going to be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p4. For calcium, we've got 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, ending with 4s2. So when we remove three electrons, from each of these. The third electron in sulfur, or actually all three of the electrons in sulfur, come out of this orbital. Now this orbital is still part of the valence, that's with the higher energy levels. So for sulfur, these represent the core electrons, this is the higher energy level, this represents the valence. Now for calcium, when we remove that third electron, we're going to remove two from here, and that third one is actually going to come out of the 3p orbital. Now thinking about what's going on with calcium, all of these up to the third energy level are core for calcium. Calcium only has two valence electrons, again they're in that highest energy level orbital, and they're here. So for calcium, not only are we removing valence electrons, but we're also removing one core electron. Because we're removing one core electron, that third ionization energy is going to be highest for calcium. And it's going to be higher for calcium because we're actually removing a core electron. So when you're doing these second, third, fourth ionization energy problems, I think it really helps to write out the full electron configuration so you can get a really good understanding of where that electron is coming from. Because it's going to take a lot more energy to remove an electron that's a core electron than it will to remove an electron that's a valence electron. Okay, taking a look at the next problem. They're giving us four elements, and they just want to know which one has the lowest first ionization energy. For this, we can look at the general trend on the periodic table. So again, we should find the elements. They're talking to us about boron, aluminum, carbon, and silicon. So we can see that those are all very close to each other. So in order to figure out the ionization energy trend, I like to think about the radius trend. So we know that something that has a low first ionization energy means that it's going to be relatively easy to remove electrons. Well, what would the atomic radius have to be like for it to be easy to remove an electron? If we want it to be easy to remove an electron, we want an element where that nucleus is not holding on to the electrons very tightly. We know that if the radius is very large, that nucleus can't do a good job holding on to the electrons that are very far away. So if we want it to be easy to remove an electron, we want to find the element that has the largest radius. And of those four, the one with the largest radius, it has to be one of these two, because we know that the radius increases as we go down. So boron and carbon are going to have relatively small radii. This is going to have some of our larger radii. And you should remember that the general trend for atomic radius is that atomic radius gets smaller this way, which tells us that aluminum is actually going to have a larger atomic radius, which means it's going to be easier to remove one electron from. So aluminum is going to have the lowest first ionization energy because it has the largest radius. Well what about the one that has 
the highest first ionization energy. The one with the highest first ionization energy is going to have the smallest radius. because atoms that have small radii are holding their electrons closer to the nucleus, so it's going to be more difficult to remove that electron. And again, if we look at our options, we know that boron and carbon are going to have the smallest radii because they are one group above, or one period above. And then if I look at the general trend for radius, as they move to the right in the period, the radius gets smaller. So carbon's going to have the smallest radius, which means that it is going to have the highest ionization energy. So again, when you're doing these ionization energy trends, I need you to do more than just say, oh, it's to the right in the periodic table or it's further down in the periodic table. You have to be able to explain why the ionization energy trend is this way. And I think it's easiest to explain the ionization energy trend in terms of the radius trend, because you know that atoms that are small are holding onto their electrons tightly. It's gonna require a lot of energy to remove those electrons. So they're going to have high ionization energies if they have a small radius. On the other hand, if you have an atom with a large radius, those electrons are very far away from the nucleus, they're not being held tightly, so those are gonna have lower ionization energies, and then again, a larger radius. So the trends for ionization energy and radius are opposite, and you can explain the ionization energy trend in terms of the radius.